The following episode of The Kingdom of Isolation contains footage from the film being discussed. The footage is used solely for the purposes of education, commentary, and criticism under fair use. Please support the animators by watching this film on Disney Plus or home media where available. This episode also contains spoilers throughout. Disney fans, and welcome to the latest episode of The Kingdom of Isolation, where in times of trouble, why not celebrate the magic of Disney? And today, the Day of Reckoning has finally arrived, as we look at Chicken Little, released in 2005. The first CG film without Pixar since Dinosaur... Okay, do okay dull monotone voice aside, what the hell were Disney thinking when they made this? The animation is horrible, the characters are unlikable at best, and utterly detestable at worst. Oh. And, pop, and the pop culture references make the film dated from moment of release. Like Home in the Range, this is the sort of garbage I expected from a director video sequel. And we all know how garbage... The, and we all know how garbage most of them were. This, on the other hand, should never have even been considered as an idea for a film. <sighs> so, director Mark Din Dindle, who also helped with the story with Mark Kennedy, Steve Benkic, Ron J. Friedman and Ron Anderson, John Debney with the music, casting directors Matthew John Beck, Math uh, Mary Hidalgo and Jen Rudin. You are all responsible for the worst Disney film I've ever seen. I have to sit this I have to sit through this film again so I can get the clips. Every single section of the scores is a big fat zero. If I could, I'd give it all minus eleven. Yeah. Every single section deserves a minus 11, but I can't do that because that's just being too mean. So I have to stick to zeros. But if I did, it would end up giving this film a an unbeatable score of minus 110%. That's how much I hated going through this misery fest, and I will never be watching it again after today. Rants one over. Now to go into great detail as to why I hate this film as much as I do. How about Once Upon a Time? How many times have you heard that to begin a story? No, I don't think so. It sounds familiar, doesn't it, to you? Oh, no, no, not the book. How many have seen opening the book before? <laughs> Three false openings. Yeah, this doesn't inspire much confidence. So Chicken Little causes panic in his town, thinking the sky's falling, which turns out to be just an acorn. And I'm going to quickly run through the chaos. Water Tower destroyed. Cor cars honking the Mickey Mouse Club theme. No joke. M-O-U-S-E. The theatre is watching Indiana Jones, the first of many pop culture references, making the film dated from moment of release. Oh, and don't worry, I'll be keeping tally. I will be keeping tally of this one. <laughs> oh, boy. This is going to be misery. Uh, misery, misery, misery. This is what this film has chosen to give me. So, yeah. We're, we're already less than four minutes into the film, and the town has basically been destroyed, Chicken Little's been classed as insane, and everyone hates him, including his dad, who tells him to play a game of hide-and-seek where the goal is never to be found. 
Oh boy. Right, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go through the cast as well. So that they are out of the way as well. Zach Braff as Chicken Little. Gary Marshall as Buck Cluck. Don Knotts as Mayor Turkey Lurkey. Patrick Stewart. Yeah, Patrick Stewart finally makes it into a Disney film. Yeah, he passes on films like The Black Cauldron, Aladdin, The Lion King, Pocahontas, uh... Uh, Tarzan, he passes on all that. He passes on Atlantis, he passes on Treasure Planet because of scheduling conflicts regarding Star Trek The Next Generation. But Chicken Little, yep, yeah, sign me up. Patrick Stewart, why didn't you pass on this one? You could have. Oh! <sighs> Amy Sedaris as Foxy Loxy, Steve Zahn as Run to the Litter, John Cusack as Abby Mallard, Wallace Shawn as. Principal Fetchit, last seen in Kingdom of Isolation, trying to let out his best dinosaur in uh, Toy Story. Uh, Harry, Sh uh, Harry Shearer as the dog announcer. Oh, my word. Harry Shearer, why did... Good Lord, what is happening in there? <sighs> not now, Super Nintendo Chalmers, not now. Fred Willard is the alien dad. Catherine O'Hara taking a break from trying to find Kevin, who's home alone as an alien mom. Patrick Warburton as the alien cop. Adam West! Why? Adam West! Why? 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 <laughs> as Ace, uh, Mark Walton as Goosey Lucy, Mark Dindle as Morcubine, Porcupine, and the coach, Dan Molina as Fresh at the Fish Out of Water, Joe White as Rodriguez, the Acorn mascot, and the umpire, uh, Sean Elmore, Evan Dunn, and Matthew uh, Justin as the alien kid, uh, Ke um, Kelly Hoover as Mama Runs, Will Finn as Hollywood Fish, Dara McGarry as Abby, uh, Hollywood Abby, and Mark Kennedy as Hollywood Runt. Oh, why did any of you think this was a good idea to be a part of this film? But nevertheless, it wouldn't be a King of Isolation episode if I didn't go into the behind-the-scenes trivia. So... I'm just going to get all the casting stuff. I'm just going to get all the trivia out of. I am just going to get all of this out of the. I'm just going to get all this trivia. Out. I'm just going to get as much of this trivia out of the way as I can. So, editor Dan Molina performed the voice of Fish, the voice of Fish Out of Water, by vocalizing through a tube into the water, into a water cooler tank full of water. Oh. Huh. Huh. That's how he that's how he achieved that. Okay, fair play. Uh, Holly Hunter was never considered for Abby Mallard. She was uh, the original voice of Chicken Little. She recorded all of her lines, but was replaced by Zach Braff, who, who ugh, when the studio decided to make the character a male. Oh, boy. There was a sequel called Chicken Little 2, The Ugly Duckling Story. No, we didn't need any more of it. We don't want any more of this. We did not deserve any more of this because it was not needed. Ugh. The sequel was in production when John Last was appointed Chief Creative Officer of Disney Animation. His first task was to cancel all sequels. Thank God he stopped us from going through any more misery. Uh, this was Don Knotts' uh, last theatrically released movie, released a few months before his death. So, rest in peace, Don. Yeah, Chicken Little was originally going to be female. Sure. <laughs> yeah, checks out. Yeah. Uh, because of their combined energy, Zach Braff and Gary Marshall recorded some of their sessions together. A highly unusual move for an animated movie. It's not the first time that's happened. We saw it happen, I think, in Monster Inc. And I think they did it with an Empress New Group as well. Um, anyway, uh, opening sequence already done that. Yeah, this is the first movie in the Disney animated feature lineup to have a character voiced by Sir Patrick Stewart. Yeah, Stewart previously tried out for characters in previous uh, Disney animated films, but wasn't lucky enough, mainly due to his commitment with Star Trek The Next Generation. These include <sighs> The Horn King and the Black Cauldron, uh, Basil, The Horn King and the Black Cauldron, Basil the Great Mouse Detective, uh, Francis and Oliver and Company, King Triton and the Little Mermaid, Cogsworth and Beauty and the Beast, Jafar and Aladdin, Scar and Zazu in The Lion King, Radcliffe in Pocahontas, Frollo in Hunchback of Notre Dame, Zeus in Hercules, Clayton in Tarzan, Jumbo in Lilo and Stitch, Mr. Arrow in Treasure Planet, the Emperor of China in Mulan, uh, uh, Kashikim, uh, Ned 
uh, Nedak, uh, the king of Atlantis in Atlantis the Lost Empire. Oh, um, there's there's a scene later. There's a scene later on in this film. Yeah, like I said, I'm just getting the behind the scenes trivia out of the way first because I am not. Because I am just getting through this episode as quickly as I can. So I never have to watch this film again. In the scene where Buck Clock is driving Chicken Little to school. Why didn't he just drive him all the way to the school then? Instead of making him wait for the bus. Oh, oh yeah. Because the animators wanted to inflict more misery on Chicken Little. Making me feel no sympathy for him whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm going to get into that. I'm going to get to that in a moment. I'm going to get to that in a moment. I'm going to get to that in a moment. Uh, uh, 3D, yada, 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 and nobody cares. Uh, this movie has an exclusive, this, this movie somehow has an exclusive trailer in the movie Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It, it starts out with the beginning of Hitchhiker to the Guide, Hitchhiker's, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy's teaser trailer, and then turned into Chicken Little. Ah! Loosely based upon the fable, the sky is falling. Uh, the story only bears minute similarities to the movie, such as the idea of the sky is falling and the rhyming names. The story was previously adapted by Disney as the 1943 sim silly symphony, Chicken Little. And they should have left it at that! We didn't need a live action! We didn't need a... Oh, oh, oh. We didn't need or want a film like like this. Ugh. The technical team built a digital tool called Chicken Wire, which is a geometric wireframe model of the characters that the animators could squash and stretch and smear. They wanted to get a 2D animation style in 3D animation. No wonder the animation looks so ugly. Porcupine, Porcupine only says three words throughout the entire film. Yo. No. Whoa. Thank God these two. Oh boy. Now, Michael J. Fox, David Foley, Matthew Broderick, D.B. Sweeney, and David Spade were all considered for the role of Chicken Little, which, all of which had been in the, uh, the respective voices of protagonists uh, in Atlantis, Bugs Life, Lion King, Dinosaur, and Emperor's New Roof. Uh, the actor and actress that play the alien parents were also cast as husband and wife in Monster House. Mm, interesting. Uh, Monster House, Halloween film. Might give that a watch. Um, yeah, Chicken Little was somehow inserted into the video game Kingdom Hearts 2 as a way of advertising the movie in Japan. Yeah, they had him as a summon in the game. Uh, the shift to computer-generated animation occurred about halfway through production. Yeah, thanks, Michael Eisner. The technical team also built a program called Shelf Control, which allowed the animators to see the whole model on screen while having a direct access to any chosen area of the character. The original plans, uh, the original plans were to have the beginning of the movie telling the telling the establishing story of Chicken Little and the Ape One in traditional hand-drawn animation. Don Knotts, who supplied the voice of Turkey Lurkey, the town mayor, recorded the voice track as the narrator for this sequence, and it also had a cameo appearance of, of Disney star Donald Duck as Ducky Lucky. The idea was abandoned, and that part of the story was refashioned as a main part of the movie and done in computer animation. Uh, uh, this was dedicated to the memory of uh, Joe Grant, who passed away the same year the film uh, came out. Joe Grant, a long time, um, a long time, uh... so that's it, yeah. So yeah, uh, a long time animator for uh, the studio started in 1932, uh, and he designed uh, Queen in Snow White. Uh, he led the development of Pinocchio, co-wrote Fantasia, Dumbo, and Saludos Amigos. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and during World War II, Grant actually won um, a, an Oscar for Der Führer's Face, which was um, one of the many World War II uh, propaganda 
uh, uh, one of the many anti-Nazi uh, propaganda uh, short films. And uh, this one also starred Donald Duck. So, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, where was I? Where was I? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a hidden wiki when the aliens are chasing Chicken Little and friends through the cornfield. Uh, they cut out a crop circle, part of which looks like the Mickey Mouse symbol. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. There was, there was something else. There was something else in here. Uh, what was it? There was something else in here. Uh, see, 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 see. There's something somewhere. Um. Oh, there it is. There it goes. Uh, and, and you see where Buck Pluck is. So anyway, anyway, back to the driving seat. Um, in the background, you see a bird walking into a storefront window twice. Uh, the store owner comes out to investigate, and it turns out he's a bull. And the store is full of China. Yeah, the cliched bull in a China shop. Yeah, never, <laughs> yeah, never seen that one before. Uh, uh, the box office for this, uh, the, the box office earnings for this film, it barely broke even. It had a budget of 150 million pounds and it, 150 million dollars, and it barely broke even. It barely broke even. Because for context, folks, you've got it. Uh, the film's got to make at least double the budget uh, to to break even, and then anything else from there is a profit. So anyway, uh, Jamie Donnelly, Jodie Foster, Laura Dern, Scorny Weaver, Gina Davis, Jamie Lee Curtis, Sarah Jessica Parker, Helen Hunt, and Madonna were all considered for the role of Abby Mallard before Joan Cusack was cast. Madonna's acting isn't that. Madonna, Madonna singing, yes. Her acting, not so much. Um, uh, Joe Ranft um, worked on this film as well before he, uh, passed, he, he passed away during the production of uh, the film and uh, the film was dedicated to his memory, as were uh, Tim Burton's Corpse Bride and Open Season, where he designed characters um, for that film. And um, also, uh, Cars was dedicated uh, to him uh, as well. Joe Rams, he uh, he voiced characters like uh, uh, Lenny in Toy Story, Heimlich in uh, A Bug's Life, Francis leaves him alone, say, I'm purple heads! Uh, and he was, uh, I think he was Wheezy as well in Toy Story 2, I think. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it was originally planned for a July um, uh, release. However, it was pushed to November 4th, which ended up pushing Cars to June 9th, 2006. This film was responsible for making me wait until 2006 to see Cards, which I was really looking forward to when it was first announced. Uh, Mark Dindle was a, a huge fan of Dave the Barbarian and wanted uh, Danny Cooksey to voice the character of Runs the Mutter. Huh. Dave the Barbarian. Great Disney Channel show. Beep, 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 beep. I'm always going to have a soft spot for Kim Possum. Uh, this is the second Disney movie to star Joan Cusack and Wallace Shawn after Toy Story 2. And it was also the second time Wallace Shawn had voiced a principal in a Disney movie after a goofy movie, which is also a dog that's pretty strict. <laughs> yeah, little figure. Uh, Chicken Little describes the piece of sky uh, that falls as she being shaped as a, like a stop sign, implying that it is shaped like, uh, like an octagon, where when another piece is shown, it is in the shape of a hexagon. Yeah, a six-sided stop sign. <laughs> yeah, there's a new concept. Uh, the movie. Uh, Steve's uh, Steve Zahn's first act, first voice actor performance in a film after previously voice acting after previous voice actor performances were uh, of his were in live action films like the Stuart Little franchise. Oh yeah, because he was the voice of Monty. He was the voice of Monty. How's about that? And. Uh, uh, and he would end up uh, being involved in uh, The Good Dinosaur 10 years later. Uh, probably the most forgettable 
Uh, a bit of Pixar film. Uh, Rich Moore, interestingly, was involved in this film uh, as well before he went on to direct Re Wreck-It Ralph's Utopia and Ralph Breaks the Internet. Uh, originally, Theodore Shapiro was to compose the score, but he turned it down. But Harry Gregson Williams was supposed to turn uh, compose the score, but he turned that down as well due to his work on Flashed Away. As did John Powell, who went on to work on Ice Age and Happy Feet. Oh, thank goodness for oh, thank goodness for How to Train Your Dragon. Thank goodness for one of the greatest pieces of film music from John Powell. Thank you very much. Catherine O'Hara has actually been in The King of Isolation previously as well. I've just spotted as well. She was in The Nightmare Before Christmas 12 years beforehand. Um, so yeah, some of the other names on top uh, on top of the names I've already um, mentioned. So I'm just going to go through this list. <laughs> yeah. Right, so um, so let's have a look. Um, so yeah, Matthew Broderick, David Foley, Michael J. Fox, David Spade, D.B. Sweeney, Matt Dillon, Jack Black, Justin Long, Leonardo DiCaprio, Adam Sandler, James Marston, Shia LaBeouf, Sam Hutting Huntington, Sa uh, Sean Farris, Steve Martin, John Hedder, Robin Williams, Paul Walker, Johnny Knoxville, Johnny Knoxville from Jackass. How's about that? Sean William Scott, Ashton Kutcher, Josh Peck, Drake Bell, Jason Bateman, Matt Damon, Jet Li, Jack Chan, and Keanu Reeves were all considered before Zach Braff was cast. Yeah, over 40 actors auditioned for the voice role of Chicken Little before Zach Braff landed the part. <laughs> uh, the title character of this film uh, is the first bird character in an animated film to be an outcast of the community. Yeah, no kidding! You caused absolute chaos! Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> oh I've just realized Harry Shearer was actually Kent Brockman in uh, The Simpsons, not uh, not Seymour. That was somebody else. Actually, did he voice Seymour? Did he voice Seymour as well? I think. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure if he did. Uh, Simpsons, here we go. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, he does provide the voice of Skinner. I was right. I was right first time. Huh, about that? I was right. Yeah, he did voice. He does voice Seymour. Uh, and he also voices uh, Ken Brock. Uh, so, uh, for Buck Cluck, Martin Sheen, Joseph D. Reitman, Dan Aykroyd, Christian Slayton, James Woods, Peter Falk, Lawrence Fishburne, Dennis Hopper, Michael Douglas, Willem Dafoe, Christopher Walken, Bill Murray, Richard Drivers, James Earl Jones, Stephen Col uh, Colbert, and Mick Jagger, all considered before Gary Marshall was cast. Uh, Amy Sedaris' uh, first, it was her first time voice acting. Uh, before she would go on to be Cinderella in Shrek the Third and Jill in Puss and Boots, as well as the guinea fowl in the live-action remake of The Lion King. Blech! Shot for shot, it was the laziest remake they've ever done. Uh, and Tina Templeton in The Boss Baby Family Business. Huh. So she's been with all the studio. She's been with, so she's been with DreamWorks as well. Uh, Mark Dindle previously worked with John uh, Debney, Patrick Warburton, and Joe White on The Emperor's New Groove. And with Don Knotts, and with Don Knotts and Mona Marshall on Cats Don't Dance, respectively. I don't see that. Uh, it was this was uh, Dindle's last credited involvement with an animated film up until Wonder Park, uh, and his last uh, directorial effort on on an animated film until next year's Garfield film that's coming out. So yeah, we've got an animated Garfield film coming out next year. Don't have Bill Murray. Please don't have Bill Murray voice again. <laughs> Any regrets? Garfield, maybe. Uh, the second collaboration with Patrick Stewart and John Debney uh, in an animated film after Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius back in 2001. How's about that? Or was it the year 2000? No, it was definitely 2001. The 2001 films for best animated film uh, at the 2002 ceremony. I'll get right. I'll get back to this. Anyway. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um... So yeah, um, for Foxy Loxy, uh, names that were considered were Bette Midler, Midler Sylvia, Penel, uh, Mary uh, Steenbergen, Kathy Najimy, 
Rocio Banquels, Chris, Kirsten Jenner with uh, Ca uh, Carol Dean, Claire Danes, Isabel Maddo, and Faith Ford, all considered. Uh, and for, uh, for Tina, the alien mum, uh, Bet, um, Rocio de, de Cal, Diane Keaton, Julie Bowen, Rachel Vise, Miranda Richardson. Miranda Richardson? I've seen that name somewhere before. Miranda Richardson, I have definitely seen that name somewhere before. What has she been in? Oh, yeah, Blackadder. Oh, she was in The Goblet of Fire as well. Uh, there was a film adaptation for Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, Blackadder. Ah, right, okay. That's what I've seen them before. Right, okay. Anyway, back to business. Uh, uh, Terry Polo, Winona Ryder, uh, Dana Reeve, Linda Carter, and Veronica Cartwright were considered to voice. Uh, Patrick Warburton and Patrick Stewart also worked together on the Ted films. Barrel of Laughs, those, those films. Uh, as the narrator and guy. Uh, Wallace Shaw and Patrick Warburton were in Skylanders Academy. Isn't that the spy? Isn't that the, uh, isn't that the spiral game? Or was that... Uh... Oh! It's an animated... Oh, it's an a... oh, Skylanders Academy. It's an animated series based on the, uh, the Skylanders. Huh. How about that? Uh, Gary Marshall and Adam West were previously on an episode of Rugrats. Uh, this was the first cl collaboration between uh, Greg Berg and experienced voice actor David Cowgill since Toy Story. And John Debney and Amy Sedaris both appeared in live-action remakes of previous Walt Disney Animation Studios films that had been directed by John Favreau. John Debney appeared in Lion King and Amy Sedaris. Right, so. Alright, so, behind the scenes trivia out of the way. Now, it's time to get the rest of this garbage fest out of the way. Oh, hell no! Uh, a movie's being made, and it's been one whole year since that day. Yeah, one bad incident makes you the laughing stock for life, and no one ever forgives you for it? <laughs> Way to make everyone unlikable! The school bus doesn't let him on, traffic doesn't stop for him, even gets locked inside his own locker. And... This mid 2000s soundtrack is not good. It's not even plausible. It's not even passable. And I hate saying that about soundtracks. I love my film soundtracks. I brought it up again. Uh, I brought it up in Home of the Range in the previous episode, which you can find in the top right of your um, which you can find in the top right of your screens, folks. So <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, the trailers were made to be dramatic with epic choir music in the background. One of them even had Ode to Joy. And they tried to do that with this train wreck. And they... I've already... I've, I've already ugh. Yeah. They somehow put him into Kingdom Hearts 2 as a summon to promote the... As a summon to promote the film in Japan. And then we finally get Patrick Stewart in a Disney film. And... So yeah, Patrick, every film you passed on because of doing Star Trek, yet you were more than happy to do this just to say you've been in a Disney film. You should have left this one alone! Ugly duckling. Yeah! <sighs> and, ugh, Foxy, just shut up, you hideous bu- You ugly, hideous bully! Before I do something not very PG to you to ensure you never bully anyone again. Yeah, Chicken Little doesn't make it to Patrick Stewart's class, and the gym coach hates the unpopular kids when they play dodgeball. You're not supposed to do that to a school student, you useless teacher! Fish makes another... Fish makes the next outdated pop culture reference, dodging everything thrown at them. Hey, maybe it'll just go straight to video. That's the least of my problems. <laughs> Abby, straight to video? More like straight into the garbage! Timeout is called, and the bullies are on their cell phones. <sighs> I thought cell phones were banned at school. Or they didn't get, or they didn't get banned in two thousand and five. They were just told not to bring them to school. Oh well. And not one little chip at a time, but bam, smash, bits of emotion flying everywhere: anger, frustration, denial, fear, deep depression. In fact, you see what I'm saying? 
Abby, you're not helping his case here. What do you... What do you mean we still have over an hour to go? Come on, you are not a loser. You're inventive and resourceful and funny and cute and... What? Abby, I'm sorry. Since when? Fish becomes King Kong. Anyone keeping count of uh, how many of these outdated references are making the film? Because right now I'm count. Because right now I'm at three. So Chicken Little gets so, so Chicken gets blamed for everything, including ugh, ugh, and is told off regarding. Look, well, let's just run through the list, please. Not showing up for class. Inappropriate school attire. Picking fights in gym class. And the fire alarm. Legitimately, I have no reason to like anyone in this film. I don't even have any sympathy for Chicken. And when you have no sympathy for the protagonist, you've got problems! You don't have to explain anything. Pluck, you're not helping your son either. Really said baseball? Are, are you sure? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, hey, why not, right? <laughs> baseball not being his thing? How do you know if you're not willing to let him try? Although Chicken's not helping his case getting the terminology wrong. <laughs> oh, Chloe. If only you were here. <laughs> You'd know what to do. Uh, Chloe would know what to do? <laughs> yeah, not holding my breath on that one. So we get a training montage for baseball while Foxy is doing the max. Doing a max for staffing and being a one-player team. For the acorns? Did, this, did Disney decide the team name at the last minute? Oh, the commentator isn't exactly doing a very good job because they're taunting their rivals directly and it's not funny or pleasant to listen to. The coach is telling Chicken not to swing. At this point, I'd say, to hell what you think! I'm playing my game, not yours! Use that anger and frustration at not being used for batting all season. Just, dis just destroy the bat. Just destroy the bat, yeet the ball out of the park, and hand the broken bat back to the coach and tell them to their face, never tell me I'm not good enough ever again. Something I've had to do my entire life. Wait, hang on, what's this? He wins the game? And everyone likes it? Oh, now you, su oh, now you start supporting him? Only took you 25 minutes! Watch this be all for nothing later. The chicken somehow wins the championship thanks to the convenient toe. No, no, no! I never want to be reminded of Norman the Rage again! Too much convenience! No! I am the champion, my friend. Chicken, you're not Freddie Mercury. And you never will be. Stop singing. So father and son celebrate the win in his. So father and son celebrate his win, until Buck jinxes the whole thing and a piece of the sky, which turns out to be a spaceship shaped like a six-sided stop sign. <laughs> yeah, when stop signs have eight sides. Chicken tried to call Abby, who's singing Spice Girls with Runt. The song is barely ten years old, and they decide to put it into the, and they decide to put it into the soundtrack. <laughs> great, yeah, just great. Also, four buzzers, eight no's. Now get off the stage and let me show you how it's supposed to be done. So they get onto the, so they get onto the alien ship. Uh, but yeah, and <sighs> seriously, toilet humor. I have another. 40 minutes to go. So Fish manages to activate the spaceship and is taken away. Oh, how convenient that the glow stick shows where they are. Seriously. Seriously, am I watching Chicken Little or War of the Worlds? Runt, do not make any more movie references. 
already references at all because adults will feel they're forced in and kids will not understand the references to a horror movie they are not allowed to watch until they're at least 17 or 18. Runt, I just said no more references! Ugh. Mickey Mouse March, Indiana Jones, King Kong, Alien, and now Saturday Night TV. I haven't counted Indiana Jones yet, so boom. So Runt discovers the aliens have Earth as their next target. Next for what? Anyway, those robots are trying to kill the Quartet. Good! Then the film will be over and I now have to see them again. What do you mean I have to put up with them for the next half hour? They're in a... F hey, look. Oh, hey, look, guys! They're in a field of cops! Get ready for cop circles! <sighs> no, Abby, no. Ring, ring any bell is a bad sign. Do you not see the start of the film? Oh no, burn this movie in hell! So the bells rung, the aliens escape, orange is left behind, and it's the acorn thing all over again, causing everyone to hate chicken again. Abby, why didn't you just listen? Why didn't you just listen to me? So the bells are the aliens' weakness, apparently. <laughs> yeah, poor convenience, I'm calling that. Don't make mommy take away your Streisand collection! Disney. I am absolutely done with your pop culture references! Now you see why I hate this film so much. Not even the music core, not even the music score can help with the supposed emotional moment of the film. Orange, and no, I'm not going to learn the actual names because I have no time for this! And I didn't, I don't even know what I was going to write. Uh, so, so, so Orange ends up uh, befriending chicken little somehow uh and they try to get him back to his parents not sure how not sure why his name is kirby they left him behind Darth Vader's Luke's father the, hey what the film's not strong with the force what i'm just doing what the film's doing at this moment what ah forget it you know you wouldn't believe me anyway it's already too late to make amends with anyone and now everyone sees the aliens Not now, R.E.M. Oh, the end of the world as we know it. Ooh! Gotta get out of here! It's like, it's like war of the worlds out there! Abby, I just referenced, I just referenced that in this review moments ago! I... 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 I didn't realize... You didn't realize because you didn't listen, you... A useless, incompetent piece of... So Buck just refuses to get it out of the system and... But you need to know that I love you. What? Since when? Since when? Fifteen minutes to go and I am done with this film forever. Chicken randomly, out of nowhere, tells Abby she's attractive. Oh my god, I jumps the shark in the process by kissing her. God damn this garbage movie! So the mayor gets vaporized as well as the key to the city. The aliens chase everyone. Buck makes a bad pun. They go to the hall while referencing I will survive. Get to the roof, get Kirby back to their parents. And the aliens leave Earth after referencing 90210. And Foxy sings Lollipop. Oh look! Oh, look, oh, hey, look at this. Look at this. Foxy's no longer a bully. She's been brain, her brain's been wiped from, uh, oh, God. The one thing they will never do is mess with a good story. Fuck how stupid and naive you are. The movie's made with Adam West, of all people. Voicing a Hollywood macho chicken little. And they make a reference to Ain't No Mountain High Enough. And Star Wars. And the end credits. The end credits have Don't Go Breaking My Heart 
and the Cheetah Girls, and we're finally done! Side note, I counted 18 pop culture references, both in the music and in... Ugh, make it 19 because of R.E.M. We are finally done with this film. That was worse than Home on the Range. Not once did I laugh, cry, or feel anything other than anger, frustration, and misery while watching this. I've already done the scores, and this episode, and this episode is why everything got a big fat zero. But nevertheless, I am gonna have to go through the legacy portion of this. So we're gonna go through the box office and the critical reset the Rotten Tomatoes the <laughs> Oh funny 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 Oh that's funny right anyway so box office 40 million and it somehow debuted at number one at the box office being the first disney animated film to do so since dinosaur so emperor's new groove didn't debut at number one treasure planet or brother bear films that are actually good they didn't debut at number one but dinosaur one of those forgettable films and the only thing saving it was the soundtrack and then you've also got home on the range which was misery and yet, and yet, and yet, garbage like this gets to number one in the box office. How the hell does that even work? And it stayed there for a second week, uh, beating Zafura. The film grossed one hundred thirty-five million dollars in North America and one hundred seventy-nine million dollars in other countries, making a worldwide total of three hundred fourteen point four million dollars. Yeah. $14 million profit. I don't think that's going to cover the cost of buying Pixar. This reversed the slump the company had been facing since 2000, during which time um, it released several films that un underperformed, most notably Fantasia 2000, Atlantis, Treasure Planet, and Home on the Range. Rotten Tomatoes gave the film 36%. Disney expends more effort on the technical presentation than in crafting an original storyline. Plugged in. Something called plugged in. It, it, a postscript for parents. A single mistake defines Chicken Little and he spends the rest of his life trying to live it down. As he puts it, one moment destroyed my life. Later, another single moment is home run redefines him as a hero to his friends and his dad, who says, I guess that puts the whole sky is falling into him behind us once and for all. Insecure and observant young viewers may latch on to this kind of oversimplification and use it as license to magnify the significance of their own bumblings, whatever that might whatever they might be. I'm sorry, but you do not I'm sorry, do not Teach your kids these sort of things. And now you understand why I hate this film as much as I do. Because, like I said, not, nobody is likable in this. It's just absolute garbage. It's just simply nothing but absolute garbage. And that plugged in um, review there, yeah. That pretty much speaks. That pretty much speaks volumes for how much this film is hated. So much so that it did get nominations for big awards, including the including the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards in two thousand and six, losing out to Madagascar. Thank God. Nominated for four Annies. Didn't win any of them. Nominated for a Critics' Choice Award and Producers Guild of America Award as well. Why did it get nominated for any of this? Seriously, why? Why did it get nominated for any of this? 
At least at the end, he's a he, Wallace and Gromit, the curse of the Were Rabbit. Thank God for that. Uh, best animated video game that came out. Okay, where? Okay. Um, uh, Annie's. Where the hell was Kingdom Hearts? Where the hell was Kingdom Hearts? Why the hell was Kingdom Hearts 2 not nominated? It's the best animated video game. But this one, the Stinker Bad, the Stinker's Bad Movie Awards. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it was a Los Angeles based group of film buffs and film critics devoted to honoring the worst films of the year. It's it's another it's um it's it's a branch off from the Razzies. This one this was a dishonorable mention for Worst Picture and it won for Worst Animated Film. <laughs> um, oh, and by the, by the way, Worst Picture that year was um, Worst Picture that year was Alone in the Dark. Uh, Uwe Ball, I believe it was. Let's double check. Yep. Yep. And uh, that year um the film that won the most awards? Yeah, Son of the Mask. Thanks, Jamie Kennedy. And uh, he got 10 nominations as well. So, yeah. Soundtrack, don't care. Not interested. Video games. Chicken Little spawned two video games. The first Chicken Little is an action adventure game released on Xbox. Two days later, it was released on PlayStation 2. Yeah, 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 so blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. The second uh, Disney uh, Chicken Little Ace in Act. Ace in action, inspired by the superhero movie within the movie finale of the film. Oh my god. Why? Seriously, why? And Chicken Little himself appears as a summon in the video game Kingdom Hearts 2. His inclusion is somewhat noteworthy as Kingdom Hearts 2 debuted before the film in Japan. Uh, with the character's inclusion serving as a promotion for the then upcoming movie. Ugh, god. So we're finally done. We are finally done with Chicken Little. I just have to edit the episode and get it up onto the channel and I never have to do this film again because it was misery. <sighs> Thank God. Ugh. Everything, like I said, everything got a big fat zero. This will never be beaten. This is the worst film Disney have ever done. Do not watch this. Do not even talk or think about it. It's ugly. It's unlikable. And will always be remembered for all the wrong reasons. Thank God we have Meet the Robinsons next in the next episode. As well as a special Disney 100 day episode talking about our favorite Disney memories from over the years. As well as counting down my 10 favorite Disney films and my 10 favorite Pixar films. <sighs> so with that being said, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did hit the thumbs up, and if you want to be part of the Kingdom of Isolation yourself, you can hit the subscribe button down at the bottom, click the bell, turn on notifications so you don't miss when an episode goes live. As I said, the next episode is going to be Robinson's, and uh, on on um, on Disney 100 Day as well, there is going to be a special Kingdom of Isolation uh, episode, uh, and that is coming out on October 16th. And, oh boy, I cannot wait. Oh, it's going to be a blast. It is going to be a blast reminiscing on our favorite Disney movies. I have had so many, I have had a lot of people contribute to this episode so far. Uh, and I'm hoping I'll be able to get somebody on board to record the episode with so we can talk about our favorite Disney memories on camera. So, with that being said, um... I'll see you guys for I'll see, I'll see you guys for, for the next episode Meet the Robinsons but until then folks we'll see you guys next time in the Kingdom of Isolation <laughs>